Hey, hold, hold on for a second. Don't talk loud. Yeah, I mean, I. No, I know. Hey, hey, everyone. Um, we're we're now. Well, let me wait. Let me wait a second. Hey, everybody. I'll I'll start this update in a second. All right, I'll say it a couple times. Um, basically, what's going on up there is we're going round and round. Heather has made it clear to her. Uh, council uh, boss that she does not want him representing her and um, we, it was kind of okay with that and that Heather could represent herself but the judge uh, is is insisting that you know she waive her right to counsel and uh, Heather is not acknowledging that she has to waive anything and I think that's out of concern of uh, you know another little trick to try to establish jurisdiction so um, she's she apparently is not gonna waive that right which makes a lot of sense to me because you know we have a right to we have a constitutional right to defend ourselves we also have a constitutional right to a lawyer if you want one but that doesn't mean you have to waive a right in order to exercise another one you know I don't have to waive my First Amendment rights in order to exercise my Second Amendment rights so this is kind of going round and round. Um, the judge has just taken a re or called for a recess. A boss, interestingly enough, the judge just wanted to force it and keep proceeding, and uh, which is ticking me off a little bit. And then boss got up there and said, you know, Your Honor, I'm removing myself as counsel. She has a constitutional right to um, represent herself. And he's just basically like, I'm out. And <laughs> so she's got to be forced to uh, go through this circle again, this machination, appoint a new, um, you know, public defender to her, I guess, and then we go through the same circle over and over again, because she's not going to waive or sign anything that says she's waiving her right, uh, but she absolutely wants to defend herself and got up there and, and made it clear and the court acknowledged that she's, you know, competent and, and confident and um, the judge asked her her uh, educational credentials, which is, you know, a JD and uh, a BS in accounting or uh, and um, finance and uh, some of our other legal experience so um, you know Heather Heather showed the court you know that she's competent and able to defend herself and it didn't seem as if the court you know was objecting to that it all comes down to her this waiver is what it all comes down to so uh, that's kind of the the uh, synopsis let me look through my notes because I have a lot of notes um, yeah, Heather definitely does not want boss representing her. And the judge just uh, pounded, kept pounding and pounding, like, are you sure you understand the pitfalls? And, you know, Heather told her, she said, look, uh, we have discussed this extensively. Uh, we have exhausted discussions on this between, you know, boss and herself. Um, let me see what else I have here, guys. It's so hard for me. Yeah, exactly. Um, some, of, some of the folks in the courtroom, one person had a little sign that said happy birthday that they flashed at Heather when she came out. Some people waved and made other gestures and the marshal did uh, come over. That was in a first hearing, the first, before the first recess and he announced before the second part of the hearing started that if anybody did that they'd be removed. And then he asked if anybody had any questions and uh, somebody here supporting Heather said, yes, where is the law where um, we can't make gestures in the courtroom? And the, the uh, marshal got a little frustrated. And he said, look, that's the federal judge's order. And she goes, oh, okay, but I want to know what that law is. And uh, he uh, basically wouldn't answer that question because, of course, it probably isn't a law. I don't know that for a fact. I, I'm sorry, guys. I can't really read any questions. Um... So basically where it stands now uh, is that he Heather is definitely is going to represent, wants to represent herself. She's okay with having standby counsel, but she's not okay with boss being that standby counsel. Uh, she's just implied that their philosophies are so far apart that he uh, would not be adequate standby counsel. So for the record, she doesn't object to having a standby counsel. She just objects to it being boss, and she will not sign a waiver waiving her right to an attorney 
And that's not because she cares about, I don't think, her right to have an attorney as much as she does knowing that that would uh, imply that the court has jurisdiction over her. She, she has stated several times that uh, essentially the court has no jurisdiction, that these proceedings are not legitimate, that her detention is not legitimate. And um, the judge has also it seemed to express concern about her ongoing detention has now reached, I don't know how many, seven, eight, nine days. So she seems to be concerned with that and uh, really wants to get this resolved, probably because she realizes her own, um, her own liability in this issue. <laughs> And who knows what that's costing her per day for uh, Heather to remain detained unlawfully. So that's kind of the update, guys. Um, I'm going to put Steve back in front of you. Steve's going live again. <laughs> now, only if he wants to. I'm just kidding. Um, but, yeah, you, I know how it is. You kind of run out of things to say. So uh, I'm going to jump back up there in a moment. And uh, that's about it, guys. Thanks for tuning in. We'll have more a little later. Still going? Yeah. All right. So while I'm sitting here filling, uh, maybe I can, can talk about something that's very near and dear to my heart. I work in the uh, medical biotech industry. And one of the biggest frauds that's been perpetrated on us is the idea that, that uh, medical science is being used to the highest and best degree to help us live uh, to help us lead healthy and long fulfilled lives. Uh, <clears throat> I work in a field of, of ketones and ketones are a metabolite of fat and for your brain, heart and muscles, there's two sources of fuel that can fuel your brain, heart and muscles. That's glucose that comes from carbohydrates or ketones that comes from fat. <clears throat> a high fat diet is a thousand times healthier than a high carbohydrate diet. We have, we produce uh, a ketone ester and athletes have broken every imaginable uh, record of uh, performance and endurance on it. But the athletes is a small fraction. What's way more interesting is people with neurodegenerative diseases, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, uh, ALS, a dear, dear friend of mine passed away last week from ALS and it is a vicious a vicious disease within a year uh, she was completely incapacitated and, and died we were working with her and ketones <clears throat> help increase her energy level and her cognitive performance I've seen people with Parkinson's go from shaking 15 minutes later after the ketone ester they are cognitively aware they're not shaking it's it's a miracle but <clears throat> the ketones are just uh, to treat the symptoms what we've got to get to is the underlying disease so we started researching we started researching ALS and <clears throat> the data that I'm seeing is indicating that ALS Parkinson's and Alzheimer's are all central nervous system fungal infections so when we started following down that, uh, when we started going down that path, I was fortunate enough to meet a doctor who worked at Oak Ridge National Laboratories making bioweapons. He had a friend that came down with ALS and her symptoms matched exactly exposure to a bioweapon that's based on a black mold fusarium. And so what I'm just trying to get out for all those families suffering with these neurodegenerative diseases that we all have to get educated the, the the amyloid plaques that show up in people's brains that's not the cause of the disease that's a symptom that is our uh, immune system going haywire so uh, look into if you want to live a long time a high fat low carb diet is something that's that's really important because for us to fight and help each other and, and lead a fulfilled life we have to be healthy Part of the trick, we've been tricked into believing we're, we're slaves, but we're also tricked into believing that cancer or Alzheimer's or Parkinson's is something that everybody's going to get and just get used to it. And what it's become is a way to soak, to transfer wealth. All the people that come down with those diseases, when you're facing dying, 
versus giving away all the money that you earned. Uh, it's a it's another scam to transfer wealth <coughs> from individuals to the system. So <coughs> recapping. There is an argument right now. Uh, they're saying that Heather can represent herself in the courthouse, but that she has to waive her right to counsel. What she's saying is there's no legitimate basis to force her to waive her right. Uh, oh, thanks. He said. Uh, she's uh, saying I don't have to waive that right, and they're going round and around and around. So her attorney. Her court-appointed attorney is trying to recuse himself. Uh, he's saying, yes, she does have constitutional right to, to uh, represent herself, but that you can't have it both ways. And she's saying, wait, I have a right to counsel. So she wants to represent herself and have him advising. So that's <clears throat> what we're trying to find out now. Uh, and she's just not going to give up. And God bless her. She's been in jail for a week. And she'll stay there uh, until she gets a fair shake. So, anyhow, uh, I appreciate everybody who's, who's listening. There's a number of people here who just, like, practically spontaneously showed up. They're saying they can feel a vibe, a happy vibe. Uh, and... I'm telling you, it's palpable. It's palpable. I feel it. All the love everybody's sending, it's working. It's working. And what we're hoping is that love gets into the head of the judge and the prosecutor and and that they're able to shake off the programming uh, that they too have been victimized by. Okay? I mean, most people, the vast majority, are good, decent people that want to do the right thing. But when we've been tricked and brainwashed and and cajoled and conditioned to believe false things as appearing real, okay? It's, um, we have to send these good vibes to the people on the other side of this battle too. Just let them be open and aware. Let their hearts hear what Heather's saying. Let them view her as a human being who has every right to be there and to play by their rules. Yeah, let them wake up, you know? Imagine, <clears throat> there's, my God, there's 20 million people in this city, probably a million of them work for the federal government. Imagine when they find out that they've been party to a fraud, you know? They're not gonna insist that we, we keep being fraudulent. They're gonna, most, most of them say, well, what can I do to participate in the solution? And, has nothing to do with money. Money is a tool. Money is like a hammer. It's a, it's just a mechanism. This isn't about money. This is about standing up for ourselves, taking responsibility for ourselves, loving and honoring everybody. So just keep sending the love. I'm sure Heather's feeling it. She is exceptionally uh, intuitive and can feel it. And it's, she's kicking ass in there. <coughs> Someone asked, why did I go offline? Because I didn't want to smoke on camera. Yeah, I still have, I guess, my last bad habit. Uh, smoking, but you know what? I enjoy it, and screw it. My son, Brandon, when 19, was damaged by vaccines. Now I'm healing with him. My son, who's now seven, nearly died from MMR vaccine. He contracted a, an autoimmune disease that attacked his liver. The doctor said he was a goner. Thank God we went to um, Pittsburgh Children's Hospital. And uh, he's a healthy young man right now. So <clears throat> once we wake up to the fraud that's been perpetrated on us legally, then it's waking up to the chemtrails, the fluoride in the water, the poison that they're selling at fast food restaurants, the fact that, that in this city, in the neighborhood I live in, there's, uh, it's hard to get healthy food at a reasonable cost. Heather smokes too. Sweet. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <clears throat> you know 
what? I feel great. I'm healthy. Uh, I enjoy smoking. I don't feel guilty about it, but my uh, business partner, probably shouldn't say this, thinks that I'm, since I work in a health-related field, that I should never let anybody see me smoking in public. I feel like I'm back in junior high school smoking in the boys' room. <clears throat> With the price of tobacco, I almost grew a tobacco plant this year, but I'm definitely gonna grow one next year. Thanks for all the love from the, <laughs> the other smokers. Neil smokes too. Uh, oh my God, weed and cigs, I vape, laugh out loud. <laughs> So, <clears throat> we are stretching. I just am overwhelmed by the messages and the love that's coming through. I just can't, I can't get over it. I live in a building in DC that's mainly people in their 30s and you can't walk down the hall without it smelling like a, um, without it smelling like a, a skunk factory. Excuse me, I'm getting, uh, a message uh, excuse me my big reactor is about to go online so we can make stuff to make people healthy <clears throat> yeah so in my neighborhood, there is an awesome store called Mom's Organic Market. The people there are so nice. Uh, it's the highest vibration food, but good Lord, yeah, it's expensive. Like a bag of food is like 50 bucks and it's hard. I have uh, two little kids. It just, uh, it'd be very hard to, <clears throat> to help feed them. But imagine if we, revalue our our worth how many people would love to be farmers if they could make a, a living at it there'd be so much healthy food uh, what a wonderful job that would be how fulfilling to make to grow healthy food to raise animals uh, with love and honor <clears throat> I can't wait for that to happen thanks for uh... Neil's in the courtroom Again, you know, I'm just trying to give these updates. <coughs> Heather is arguing that she has the constitutional right to defend herself, but that she doesn't have to waive her right to a court-appointed attorney. So uh, they're trying to get her right off the bat to waive her rights, and she's just she's not buying it. Thanks for prayers and love from Texas. <coughs> I don't know uh, how to possibly get an email to Heather. Neil, uh, you can't bring your, your phone in the courtroom. It's ridiculous. Yeah, why no cameras in the courtroom? That's one of the biggest crimes uh, as far as I'm concerned. If the court is run by the people for the people, it should be absolutely transparent. Who ever came up with the idea of no cameras in the courtroom that is a total scam we can't bring our cell phones in there it's like that's the first thing I want to get rid of the other part is having to go through a metal detector uh, and be searched like a scumbag uh, you know whatever happened to the Fourth Amendment innocent until proven guilty yeah they take her phone so they can scan it and bug it uh, I imagine if someone's asking is this case being transcribed, I imagine it is, uh, it should be, and that will be a historic document. <laughs> Someone says they're used to being treated like a scumbag, okay, you know what, I guess eventually we get used to it. What I'm saying is give that the finger. I'm sick of being treated like a scumbag. Uh, now it's guilty until proven innocent. It's like, again. Everything's flipped upside down. It shows the courts are paranoid. They are absolutely paranoid because they know they're involved in systematic fraud. They're breaking the law. They're so ashamed of what they're doing in these courtrooms that they don't want anybody to see it. They'd be run out of town. It's just like on Capitol Hill. Uh, 
all the behind closed door meetings i mean like don't those people work for us aren't they supposed to be representing our best interest what's all this national security bullshit i uh, can't tell you that everything's top secret you need a clearance it's like that's all trick okay there's just not that many things that would okay how to build a, a weapon how to build a bomb maybe that kind of stuff uh but nowadays they just classify everything and it's not in our best interest is to keep us in the dark <clears throat> love energy no revenge i'm down with that i say that's huge this isn't about revenge this isn't about punishing people it's about moving forward <clears throat> wow this is blowing my mind i think uh 237 there's all these little hearts <laughs> I haven't been on Periscope before. I don't know if this is uh, just part of the the program or people just keep sending hearts, but they're flooding out and I, I'm feeling it. <coughs> so, uh, <coughs> anyhow, somehow I, I volunteered to do this. Uh, I'm just trying to wait for the message to come through. So. Thanks for everybody saying I'm doing a good job. I, uh, it's not something I practice at. Yeah, this none of this would work unless it was all hidden. If they didn't hide this and do it behind closed doors, <clears throat> they'd never get away with it. I'm in a, a small, perhaps, uh, minority of white college educated people who have been uh, I got arrested for attempted possession of drugs and having not been in a courtroom before I watched a parade of people uh, get convicted and I mean nobody was even trying to defend themselves the, the public defenders it seemed like okay we're gonna just draw uh, one name out of a hat out of every 20 so it pretends like we're doing something but the other 19 they're all going to jail and I saw it it made me sick you know I happen to have a $5,000 attorney and <clears throat> I it was a different set of rules that applied to me than all the kids that were in there you know back in the 80s during the crack wars it was so obviously rigged and it made me sick. That's something else that we got to bring to a, a stop. The laws should be written in a way that an average person can understand them. If they're so arcane and it takes a four-year degree just to begin to understand them, that's obviously a hustle. Uh, it should be in plain language, plain English. Yeah, someone writes crack equals CIA. A hundred percent agree. I mean, there's just so many things. Once you start going down the rabbit hole, finding out that uh, in Arkansas was one of the biggest uh, drop points for CIA coke in the world. Like, I know it. The guy, one of the guys that was flying the plane said it. The fact that, like, Clintons aren't in prison by us, uh, it's as if they're getting our implicit consent. If they release into the, the public consciousness, yeah, guess what? We were dealing coke and parties and lots of keys we told you you did nothing about it that's basically us then giving them our implicit implied consent that's got to end and it's not to to throw somebody in jail Clinton uh, for the rest of her life it's just to say look we as a society are drawing the line look that's wrong okay <clears throat> how uh, hypocritical is it that the governor is throwing thousands of people in jail for possession of cocaine and he's like the biggest dealer of it okay so uh, I just this is awesome I'm supposed to be at work today and I just so happy to be here you know it's it's uh, until doing this and seeing all these messages I have a couple people close to me, there's a few people I email, but it seems like we're such a small group of people. To see all these messages come through and to know uh, with proof that 
we're not crazy. I'm not the only one thinking like this. I'm not the only one saying there's got to be a better way and something is seriously wrong. So, yeah, we, we all have to connect. Uh, for me, I start my day uh, reading Kuila Pele and Stillness in the Storm. Uh, I see, uh, I sign up for um, a weekly email from Sophia Love. Those give me uh, uh, some spiritual food that I need. But I also go on blacklistednews.com. That is the best source of legitimate news i found uh, yet. So I'm encouraging everybody to, to check it out. I hope Blacklisted News somehow gets this, uh, gets this story or somebody posts it to them. Also, if anybody is ever in D.C., uh, Steve Zarpas is my name. I live at uh, 1401 New York Avenue Northeast. I got a, uh, a blow-up mattress. If anybody's in D.C., passing through, needs to crash. Uh, it's a small place, but it's cool, and love making new friends. Okay, recap. Heather is, is in court today, and the court is trying to establish her identity so they can charge her with the crime. What she's trying to distinguish between is her, is her corporate citizen identity that's associated with a social security number and her human identity. Because if the court can see us as corporations, God's natural laws don't apply to corporations. That's why all the laws in the United States are under the Universal Commercial Code. And so basically what she's trying to do is say, I'm not a corporation that you say I am. I'm a human being, and as a human being, I have God-given rights. Uh, going back to the Magna Carta, going to the Constitution, going to any number of legal documents that were the result of people, human beings, saying, wait a minute, uh, unless we collectively agree to a group of laws, human beings are naturally going to try to enslave others. So, yeah, we're none of us are corporations, but we're all legally treated like a corporation. And Heather is refusing to sign any uh, waiver or waive her rights. She's a uh, she has a JD. She went to law school. She's she's brilliant, and <clears throat> she's not going to be pushed around like those kids I saw pushed around in the 80s in that courthouse. That was just, just such a crime. You know, I kept thinking, how am I this lucky person that that knows you know how to get a lawyer, that has the money to get a lawyer? What makes me really any different than any one of those kids uh, that had? defend, uh, to have a public defender that clearly just didn't give a shit. It was just a job. They might as well just stamp. 19 guilty, one not guilty. 19 guilty, one not guilty. Wow. Feeling the love. Feeling it. I tell you, it's potent. So, whatever you guys that we are doing collectively must be working because if they really had their way in that courtroom, they would have just slammed down a gavel, guilty, whatever, you're this person, and <clears throat> we're throwing you back in jail. But obviously something's happening, okay? So the love, the intention, uh, the prayers for everybody in that building, the, you know, the, on both sides of that, that defendant table, it's working, it's making a huge difference. The fact that you're taking time out of your day to send this intention and feel love and uh, picture yourself hugging Heather, it's working. Share this broadcast with the networks. They, <laughs> uh, I think I still have my ID card from, from CNN. I don't think they'd let me in the building uh, if they saw this. Uh, I could walk over to 
MSNBC and Fox News are just uh, three blocks from here, 400 North Capitol Street. <clears throat> yeah, skin doesn't separate us from the world. Another of the biggest scams is that that we could separate ourselves based on skin color or language or country of birth. I mean, literally, what could be more superficial, okay, than skin? It's, these are parts of the insanities that we've got to wake up to. We're all human beings. It's not Asian, black, white, gay, straight. It's, we're all uh, members of one race, human race, brothers and sisters. I'm on messenger. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. With I'm on Facebook somewhere, but it's uh, I don't know. It just seems also so rigged. Uh, the monitors that they're having now to judge what's real and what is legitimate. It sounds like you know Nazi Germany. The government wants to divide and conquer us. That's the only way. 1% of the population can completely dominate 99%, okay? <clears throat> By dividing and conquering us. What would, okay, so here it is, DC uh, used to be, you know, a, a, a very segregated city. But even today, in 2017, there's still self-imposed segregation on the social level, which, which I just don't get it, okay? Like some, it must be out of fear. Like uh, we got to get past that. We got to get past that. Since this, I was thinking I need to. There's a really cool common area in my building, a basement, <clears throat> that we just start hanging out uh, and plant more flags of love and no and <clears throat> noble intentions in this the belly of the beast. This is the last place. The cabal would think we could ever flip. Tidal wave of truth. Handcuff release from Heather and all of us. That's what I've been picturing. Like handcuffs uh, sliding off her hands and a big smile. <clears throat> We're still waiting for some updates. Yeah, this is so overwhelming to me. I'm so happy. I'm so grateful to be here. This is the revolution is starting. And smiles. I don't have a gun. I don't have a pitchfork. I'm not talking about bring out the, the Bastille uh, guillotines. You know, that was another trick. You know, the, there's beings in this reality that feed off of our misery. Okay, uh, whether you, however you want to characterize them, I choose to call them uh, satanic, demonic. Okay, and I've, I believe, a hundred percent that they're, you know, archons. They're running it. I mean, whether or not the, the church is corrupted, which is pretty damn obvious. It was predicted. That doesn't negate the, the divine. Uh, information in our uh, religious texts and they're up there also they hate us like the way I see it the earth was created the way it's portrayed in the Bible the earth was created before people and the angels participated the divine council and then God's like check this out this is wicked oh I got a surprise for you now that we made this beautiful planet I'm gonna we're gonna create human beings in our image and you're going to love and honor them. That's when they said, forget that. We're not going to love and honor them. They're hairless apes. They don't deserve it. And <clears throat> that's what started the rebellion. So that side that hates humanity, inhuman haters of humanity, have got human beings that they've influenced to hate the rest of us. And I'm saying we'll just overwhelm them with love. But they can hate me all they want. And, uh, I mean, they can, they've done everything else. Uh, 
and I'm still happy and loving them and praying for them. Oh, yes. Okay, we have an update. Do you want to say it? Yes. Okay, we have an actual update. I got thrown out of the court because I became noisy, making noises. Ugh, something stupid like that. Uh, because the judge is doing everything she can to force Heather to take a lawyer because it's in the judge's advantage in the, in the District of Columbia's advantage. In there, right over the judge's head is District of Columbia. It says nothing about the United States of America. It's very clear whose court this is and they're doing all they can to, to have Heather uh, uh, cornered and say that she needs a lawyer because she, even though just stood up and told the, the judge she's a lawyer herself, that they don't think she's competent to run her own case. And, and that's just, as we all know, baloney, lots of common people have, have represented themselves in a court of law not being a lawyer and done so very well. And so now that this judge is aware that Heather is a lawyer, she really doesn't want her to represent herself because she's going to lose. So she's doing everything she can to have this boss guy working with her. And 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 uh, she's trying to stall the case, even though she's saying, I'm not trying to stall the case. I'm not, if, if she dismisses you as a lawyer, I'm gonna have to stall the case. And that's not the case. So, so it's uh, uh, obvious that the court is aware they're in trouble to me. It's very obvious because they're doing all they can to just focus on the fact that Heather won't take a lawyer. And that's literally all they're focusing on. They won't even address why Heather said, you don't have any jurisdiction over me because I've already been taken to court for this and proven I, I, you don't have jurisdiction over me. So it's kind of like taking her to court twice for, for the same crime. So since, since she's already proven herself, they're going to lose if they can get her to slip up in saying, you know, anything. But I don't think Heather's going to slip up. She's speaking very well, and when she feels she needs to, she was taking a break. She stood there and held her hand up while she was being sworn in and didn't say anything and said, give me a moment. And you could see her centering herself. And before she said, yes, before God, I will, I will, you know, say this. And, um, you know, as soon as she invokes the, the fact that she's a divine being of God and that we all are, the game's over for them and they know it. And that is what we are, where we have all been, you know, going off track for so long was not realizing who we are. And it's very frustrating. The, the guy in the court that tossed me out, I asked him, I already challenged him once when he was telling us that we couldn't make eye contact with Heather. And I said, well, what law covers making eye contact and smiling at Heather? And he got pissed off at me and said, well, I said so is basically his answer. And so they don't realize even what bullies they are at this point. Like the guy that was standing outside to, to go into court as a witness, I don't know who the hell he is, wouldn't engage with me at all on a human level. He wanted to talk about donuts with a chick walking down the you know, hallway with paper. Oh, I thought those were donuts. You know, I was like, yeah, talking about donuts is so much more important than speaking of this woman's right to be free. And I walked away from him because I was trying to engage him in an intelligent conversation and he couldn't be bothered. And, and then these attorneys who are very clearly, you know, female attorneys came in and put on these ridiculous high heels. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, I have to, I have to stop looking at this whole thing. I got, <sighs> because she comes in and the high heels and all this stuff. And I'm like, why do you have to dress like that to go to court? Maybe get closer. So uh, sorry. They, oh, sorry. Sorry if you can't hear me. Their plan is to get you guys to do something. Oh no, I, I, I have, well, I suppose if I get myself in trouble, I, I actually have a lot of connections like Heather does. That's how, how I ended up knowing Heather. How did you characterize how she was coming across? Very well, um, but the judge was, was the one who was throwing confusion into the proceeding on purpose. And it was obvious that she was doing everything she could think of, pulling up other court cases, etc., as to why she shouldn't be allowed to uh, represent herself, in spite of the fact that she's a lawyer. So, how many people? There's a lot of people out there, over 25. Absolutely, and, and the judge is, she's, I'm just telling you, I'm absolutely positive. She sees what murky water she's just walked into and she doesn't want any part of it. Because if, 
and when she has to let Heather go, she's monetarily fined for that. So we have a judge who is literally being blackmailed monetarily, all these people are, and they don't even acknowledge it because they've agreed to do it. And I did the same thing when I was in the military. I, I agreed to let them punish me monetarily if I broke any of their rules. Uh, if I got caught doing something I shouldn't be doing, I agreed to let them take half my pay and keep me on board the ship for 45 days. Never happened to me. Can't believe it, but it didn't. Uh, <laughs> but the, the point is, is that you agree to be their pawn. And if you don't realize it at some point during your career and you're being so well compensated for being their pawn, you might not even know you're being their pawn, you know? But I have a, a father-in-law, uh, Peter Take, who teaches law at Georgetown. He teaches defending the, crim the, the defendant is his, his class. And uh, the reason he teaches this is so that people can see the light. Uh, he has to teach according to the law, but I assure you that he's empowering people left and right to know their rights through, through his platform. Uh, he, his father was a judge and his brother is, a, is a, I believe, a federal lawyer uh, in, I want to say Georgia, but I, I don't. Were you don't. the only person that got kicked out? I'm so far, I'm the only person who got kicked out because I am, I'm sorry, I'm an actress and a comic and a very gregarious, loud person. And I have, I admit, I have a hard time controlling myself. And I, I seriously cannot believe, if, if I were, of anything other than white, I would be in jail. I'm sure of it because because of my white privilege, I know I've been let go many times, and it doesn't make me happy or proud to see the system operate that way. It doesn't, and and I promise you, it doesn't make other people happy to watch that either. It doesn't. It doesn't. <laughs> I'm not going to get to see the positive outcome because I'm stupid and I got kicked out because I can't shut up. <laughs> Two. There, she's on two in courtroom four. You're welcome to go up there. I'm going to go in and see what happens if she has no weapons on me. What? Take your ID and leave your phone here and your keys and everything you can. I guess Steve is abandoning you. <laughs> so are you going to stop this? or? Yeah. Yeah, she nailed. I read about her. Oh, okay. Okay, so yeah. court 2B? No. Go go in uh, first elevator, second floor, court 4. Okay, thanks. Hey, Steve, Steve, should we pause this? What? Pause this? I don't know. It sounds like you're on a roll. All right, I'll try to read things. Can you tell us what happened? Okay, well, like I said, what's happening right now is Judge Robinson is doing everything she can to force Heather to take one of her lawyers because the lawyers represent the District of Columbia, not you. So that's why you never get any justice in their system because they're not representing us. They're not there to represent us. They're there to uphold the law, which is what? A big pile of bullshit you know, that no one can read. How are we supposed to be held accountable to laws no one understands? I mean, since since last night during Trump's speech or in the last few days during his speech, he did address how there were 800 new laws for small business owners to follow. We don't realize, but when we buy a candy bar, it's been taxed six times, six times. There's no reason to tax it six times. That is Sixty dipping, not even double dipping. We're up to six dippings now. You know what I'm saying? It's it's insane. And the reason why they want guest workers in our country is because they're giving IRS services to other country now. If you go on the IRS websites, you can find out the international help they give because it's a big scammy system collecting our numbers, collecting our information, and the country, the leaders of the country, get to use your booty as collateral to create money in this fiat system, which is fine, but the system should be beneficial to us, not them. If we had access to the, the, the interest on this system, that would be something, but instead they're forcing us into false debt when we really have money. 
and and there's no reason whatsoever for us to put up with this other than we allow them to do it to us so seriously heather's right we have to stand up for ourselves each individually and let them know no nasara is part of them no more nasara no more global reset or anything like that i mean we need a global system we can work within but it has to be transparent everybody needs to understand it everybody needs to um be able to read the law and comprehend it they bring you in there my name is lisa thomas i'm from maine i drove down 12 hours i have spent a lot of time here in washington dc with with in these buildings and you know i've sat in Kennedy's office in the Capitol building, etc. I, I, I've been around. <laughs> I don't have an official capacity. I'm a Fruit Loop. I'm a married into the family kind of person, but I can see what's going on. You know what I'm saying? So, um, as the eccentric one in the group, I look like the court jester, but damn it, I'm right. <laughs> and they're crazy for following the system. I mean, a lot of my family members say, no, you don't understand. We know you're right, but if we leave the system, it's going to leave the system to the bad people and no one there fighting for us anymore. And so I understand why they stayed in it, but they're also, their hands are tied until we, the people, stand up and understand what it is that is happening to us, which is our rights are being taken away by a corporation and they do everything they can to pull up an old ass law where somebody lost in court, you know, who wasn't Heather Ann Tucci, and try to say, well, this person lost in court representing themselves. It's not really in your best interest to do this. This is what the judge was doing. She was pulling out, she came back, she took a, a, a break and came back with and cited cases in which people lost on their trying to represent themselves. And Heather's like, I'm not those people. I really don't give a shit what they did. They're not me. Uh, what happened to them has well I'm only trying to protect you and it's like it's so obvious you're not trying to protect me I already told you I'm a lawyer what more protection do I need you know than knowing the law myself so it was transparency I wish you were here too yes Heather is more patient than I am I, I could never have done what she's doing they would have just killed me I would have screwed it up somehow and I'd be somewhere because that's the way I am. My father-in-law who works for DHHS has for a long time been trying to calm me down and it hasn't worked. <laughs> I love him and he loves me very much and we go on cruises together and vacations and stuff but you know as a deputy director in the government he has to tell me to please protect myself from the government so that I don't get in trouble. He's told me more than once they'll be happy to shoot me and never think twice about it. Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Somebody said I was fun and perfect for this. And uh, we are waking up now. Concept of self-rule is not easy. Actually, it is easy. You're just not used to doing it. I'm, I've been a self-ruler my whole life. I'm a rebel. I had started getting beaten in church as a child when I shouted out, What do you mean God's going to throw me in hell? Doesn't he love me? And I got slapped. I was four. And then I was told to kiss Jesus' feet during the Easter ceremony, and I couldn't do it. I was like, no, we shouldn't have killed him, and I had all kinds of shit to say. And I got, I got beat up a lot in the Catholic system. So, of course, that turned me off of God for quite some time. But still, I knew something. there was something more, more to humans than, than this bullshit. So, um, so I, I, I'm assuming that... Huh? Uh, well, the point of Heather's UCC filing was to cover us all. One people's public trust was for all of us. So if and when she's successful, which I believe she will be because the judge is fighting so hard to even dismiss her case that, um, that uh, she, she knows that Heather's right and that she's never going to, yes, we, we never die. And once you realize this in the eyes of the court, then, then they have to give up. And the thing is, is that it's not like the Federal Reserve people don't know this. I have been through their documents very deeply on personal levels through their memos to each other. These things are online. You can read memos during the G20 meetings and how these people feel about us. And they feel that if we are unaware and don't stand up for our rights, they have every right to boss us around. And that's pretty literally literally what the paperwork said. They said that they know that on an atomic level, and I swear to God, this is exactly how it was worded, on an atomic level, we are each individual unique beings who, who defy definition. That was the Federal Reserve's words about what a human is. 
And then they talk about how they get you to, to buy into this system where you think you're a social security number and a, a job and a this and a that. Yes. We're just going to wait a little bit longer. See, the problem is, is that they cannot proceed to the case because Heather refuses to have the, the judge force a lawyer on her. So the judge is dragging out the proceedings herself and backhandedly accusing Heather of dragging out the procedure. And Heather's like, I don't want a lawyer. And the judge is sit standing and going, well, no, you need a lawyer because blah, blah, blah. But it's really because she's going to lose the case. Uh, the judge is going to lose the case. It, it's normal. It's normal for the judge to behave this way because this is her position. And, and I understand what she's doing. She has been indoctrinated into a system she's unaware enslaves everyone. She thinks she's upholding something good, but it's not. She, kept, she mentioned justice, and that was when I got thrown out because I, I went... <laughs> and I was like, this isn't justice. You're trying to force a lawyer on a lawyer. You're trying to force a lawyer on a lawyer because you know you're going to lose. So it was just... Hmm. I didn't sleep last night, sorry. I didn't put any makeup on or anything because I was like, I just want to get there. And I wandered around with Sidori this morning, drinking coffee and laughing about how funny this all is. I did send love to the judge. I tried, but I, I, is there another court date? Not that I know of. You're going to have to wait a bit. I got thrown out of court. <laughs> so I don't know what happened. I, the judge needs to recuse herself that's right she does need to recuse herself because they've already taken Heather to court already elsewhere on an identity hearing and Heather has already stood up for herself and said you have no jurisdiction over me and they lost and once they lose once that's forever that's like retrying somebody for the same thing over and over again so they're way out of their jurisdiction here yes of course she does yes Yes. Yeah. I'm sorry. You guys are saying she has a right to defend herself. Remember, the illusion is backwards and upside down. True comparison. Compassion and love to the judge. That's right. Visualize. Double jeopardy. Double jeopardy. Yes. This is so inspiring and informative. Thank you. You're welcome. I didn't realize I was going to be informative. I guess I got thrown out of the room for a reason so I could come out here and talk passionately. I did stand up in the courtroom and address the people who were witnessing what was going on during a break and say, did you notice how the judge was working very hard to force a lawyer on her? And then the judge came back and proceeded to try to force a lawyer on her some more. And that was pretty much when I snicked, when I made my noises and got tossed out by the bald guy. I already pissed off by confronting him when I asked him, uh, they told us not to make faces to Heather, not to look at her, not to wave to her. Uh, a very nice lady, Bridget, held up a happy birthday sign to her, and we were told, gosh, you know, you're not allowed to do that. And I said, could you please tell me what law covers not, not doing that? And the guy said, well, I just said so, is basically his reply to me. So, <laughs> Does anybody else want to say anything? No? You were in there. Did you see... Did you want to say anything to the people? Look at me. Do I look like a beauty queen to you? Come here. You No, you're dumb. I assure you, you look much better. Come here. <laughs> no, 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 baby. We're all beautiful. Don't even say that. We're all gorgeous. We, we, we've we been judging each other so long, you know. So they have an update. They took another recess, apparently. They took another recess, apparently. Yeah, because the judge got to go sit there and go, shit, how can I get out of this? That's basically what's happening. And I know Heather is not going to back down and take the lawyer. And that's because that's how she wins. And she knows this. She's, she, she doesn't know. I mean, she knows. She knows. And, that, and that's the whole deal. And, you know, when we first gathered in the courtroom, you could see the court people, even though they're all of color and mixed like we are, looking at us because we're not in suits and shit. And it's like, you the slave in the suit, we the free people, just so you know. Us coming in here looking like human beings, you dressed up like a penguin to keep you under control. That the, One of the lawyers came in and put on like eight inch heels. And I was like, are you shitting me? What is with those shoes? <laughs> Why you need to go into the court with them shoes? You know, it was stupid. And, and it's like, they don't know how they themselves are enslaving themselves by giving themselves a fancy position and title. Yeah, Heather doesn't really need any help. She's just waiting for this, um, 
Yeah, Heather's having fun. She's just sitting there watching the, the judge fail at pushing her over. You, you don't need to send your factualized trust to anybody after this um, because she's going to win. It, that's just all there is to it. They cannot feed, defeat her. The What we don't understand here is this was already taken to their highest court, which is the Pope. And when the Pope signed the motu proprio, this was them. This was the highest court according to their court because if you go through the paperwork and you look in the history, the District of Columbia is headed by the Pope the Holy See, and they already said, game over. So this is the powers that be resisting. <coughs> Sorry. So this is the powers that be resisting what is a fact, which is we're free. And the Pope Pope knows it. He signed that paperwork. And, and yes, Heather, Heather is, is the pinnacle to the case. This is when we turn the pyramid upside down the way it should be this is where we stand up and say no more but you know you guys we have to remember i spoke with a gentleman this morning he happened to drive me here in his taxi and he was a beautiful being and he was so excited about what i was talking about but then he went right to blaming white people for this problem and i said do you not understand that is a white woman sitting in the court defending you right now she's been arrested she's risked her life randy the white guy was gonna get killed by the black ops and they were well aware of this which is why they aired it all so what we're saying is is all along you've had people on your side but they've done a really good job through media making you think there's a division where no division exists you have people with degrees and pedigrees and all this shit on your side they're they're my family members they worked in the system so they wouldn't leave the system to the bad guys somebody had to stay there and and prevent them from completely overrunning us with insanity so people like i said like my father-in-law peter Tate teaches uh defending the criminal at georgetown so people understand how to defend us in inside the system and he i assure you does tricky shit because <laughs> i eat thanksgiving dinner with him and visit him a few times a year he got some fun stuff to say he, he does yoga and he meditates he's a very in tune deeply spiritual person uh, he also does art, you know, so that's unusual for a lawyer type. <laughs> he also advised his stepson not to become a lawyer. But uh, through that, my brother-in-law, whose name is Jason Smith, uh, you can look him up. He's a, he's a New York City lawyer for AIG. He represents big corporations. He lives in a multi-million dollar house, uh, can easily run it as a hotel for our family gatherings <laughs> of 30 plus people. We're not crowded in there, trust me. Uh, people like him know stuff that he would like to tell, you know, and I can't say what he knows at this point because I, I don't want to get him in any trouble, but I know what he knows, and it's sad. It's sad that he feels he has to stay in there and fight it in this manner because if, if he doesn't, there's no voice for us there at all. Yeah, I've asked him to do that, but you see... At that point, then, he's got to worry about his kids, and not everybody's that brave. You just have to accept that not everybody's that brave, and they're doing what they can in their capacity. For instance, I personally didn't access any accounts. I, I did once through PayPal to see that it was real. When I saw it was real, that was good enough for me, and then I researched on how to do it, but because I have enough money in the bank, I have money in the bank, I didn't feel if they decided to push this legally, I had a right to be trying to pay off my debts when I had money to pay off my debts. I wasn't sure how that was gonna go or which way yet. So we're all supporting in our way that we support and it's not gonna look the same for everybody. And even when we get on the other side of this, people are still gonna be diverse and different. We're still gonna to wanna to do different things. I just watched a bunch of little girls hobby horse riding as a competition. You know those little, horses on a stick they were very serious about how they walked on this horse and they were crying and hysterical this was an activity they liked and I was like what the hell is that but they're not harming anyone with their silly activity it's weird but you know it's their activity and we're gonna have to accept that people are gonna make up some weird stuff after we're free I'm just saying they're gonna put like you know green skin and horns on themselves and shit and look freaky because they can now they're gonna be able to express themselves 
for the first time in forever. You know what I'm saying? So the revolution is not going to make us all look more normal. It's going to make us all look more crazy because that's what we really want to be is more out there. Being normal and all of us trying to be the same is what makes us all horrified with the world. We're, we're bleh, you know what I'm saying? So, so, so I don't want to be you. I want to be me, but I want you to let me be me. And I, you want me to let you be you, right? And that's what this is really all about. We need our freedom. Exactly. Nobody, nobody in this movement wants to be normal. We're like a bunch of freaks and and that's how they, they usurp us too, is because in my family of these straight laced people, I ate dinner with John Roberts before he became Judge John Roberts and I was told not to speak and I literally turned around to my mother in law and said, Why the fuck not? He's my employee. And they were like, Oh well, we know he's your employee, but you can't talk to him like that or he won't talk to Grandpa Peter anymore and I'm like, Well, Grandpa Peter ain't losing a friend if this man's insulting to me. <laughs> I'm just saying. And Peter said, you know, she's kind of right. And then Peter went and burned his bridge with this man. Let me tell you what my, my father-in-law did with Judge Roberts to burn a bridge. He was teaching a class one day. Like I told you, he teaches law at Georgetown. And he's teaching the class. And you can Google this on YouTube. Uh, you can look it up on YouTube. It's still on there from CNN. He mentioned at the beginning of the class that he didn't want anyone to use any electronic devices to transmit any information until he was finished with his lecture. And at the beginning of his lecture, he said, and everybody was well aware he's friends with Judge Roberts, and he said, you know, I think Judge Roberts is going to step down. And then he proceeded to talk about why he thought Judge Roberts was going to step down. And then at the end of the class, he said, it was all a complete lie, and I want to know how many of you electronically texted that out before my lecture was over and it made the news. That's how fast it spread. They're like, oh my God, Judge Roberts is quitting. Peter Tague said so. And it went all over the news. Judge Roberts got pissed at Peter and stopped speaking to him at that point. And Peter said, nah, you didn't understand what I just taught those children, which is to vet your information before you believe it. And that's how we end up getting false information. That's how we end up having um, uh, incorrect information fed to us because we read a meme and we go, oh, it must be true. And we don't look any deeper into the news story. And, and so um, until we all become, thank you, thank you so much, until we all become, you know, very adamant about focusing on where did this story come from, we don't really know. So, yes, always vet your sources, right? Heather Ann Tucci, leading lady, yep. Thank you for complimenting me so much, everyone. I appreciate that. I've never done this before, but I've always... I, I've done stand-up comedy, so I'm totally comfortable in front of a camera and on a stage. So, you know, my way of, of protesting... Hmm? This? Yeah, I don't know. It's not even my camera. Some guy went in to see what's happening and left me here with his camera. So, it's some guy named Steve. I don't know who Steve is. Please read and tell Heather if she needs to sign the papers. <laughs> Tell her to talk to me. I'm beautiful. Thank you. I'm a natural. Thank you very much. Information must be your calling. I guess so. I suppose. I've always been a very... Who are you? Nice to I'm meet Vincent. you. Who? Vincent Brown. Vincent. Nice this you. is Vincent Brown. How y'all doing? And I'm Lisa Thomas. Yes. Vincent and Lisa. We are here to Standing support here supporting. this cause. It is a really, really great cause. It's Alfred. What we've been searching for, longing for. Yeah. We can't text you right now, Cat. Hey. Sorry. <laughs> So people, people, we need to we need to make sure that we understand. I'm not trying to make Vincent me, and Vincent doesn't want to be me, and I don't want to be him. <laughs> but we want to be together and not yes. have anybody say anything about it. Like if we want to walk down the street holding the hands, why should anybody look twice at that? Exactly. You know, except his wife. Are you married? <laughs> no. Okay. He's not married, so I can walk down the street. Do you have a girlfriend? We good. <laughs> okay, so good. We're all right here. I'm not married either. So anyway, we don't want to be looked at anymore as abnormal for wanting to be free. That's yep. just ridiculous. People yep. are so into the system, they don't even know they're in the system. Yes. They're blinded. And, and it's, we're, and it's all, all of us. This is really waking us up call? right here. This is really waking us up right here because we have been duped. But yeah. it's okay. We're going to pray for them. And the, and the people mm -hmm. in the system have also been duped. And we need to remember yeah, that yeah, while yeah. we're dealing with them, they are more so because they're working in it. And yeah. a lot of them, I said to, I said to, 
the, the gentleman who drove me this morning when he started picking on white people mm. and he goes well at least I, I'm driving this car so I'm not in that building doing that job and I said yeah but we need people in that building to wake up and in their moment of awakening they're going to turn to their boss and go fuck you <laughs> I didn't fucking know I was doing this I thought I was supporting something good and exactly. now I see I'm not because we need these people near them to say oh n no no more we need to stop right yeah so we need to send them positive remember, it's, energy. It's not remember, a color thing. this is not a color thing. We, we, no, we mm -hmm. just need we not need Judge Robinson to just realize I have lost this case and quit. This is a human rights case. Yes. We not are no longer know. slaves. That's yeah. Right. It's <laughs> over. It's over. That's right. That's right. This and that's is a great because I've been feeling like that for the last past six months like really really feeling the energy of god setting us free some type of way it's been feeling really free and this is and that's it. what the man who drove me this morning said he said oh my god god sent you to me to tell me this is happening today yeah. i'm so excited so and I, could, I really felt like that too i mean i drove 12 hours to come here mm -hmm. and i i don't leave my house just so you know like maybe three times a week to go run some little errands and otherwise i stay home and i don't come out for no type of like events unless it's party you know what I'm saying if it's not yeah, a party I'm not, party even, I'm not even come things like this and uh, protests and all that is out of the way but this right here y'all this is the truth this is whoo this is freedom baby yeah <laughs> let's go <laughs> woo come on y'all if y'all can see this y'all come on down come support yell. You... come come support Heather come support us come Everybody's support yourself yeah baby and, and come on it's crazy that yeah. we risk we risk we, we're afraid when we yell these people in the courtroom were very scared when i was speaking out this lovely lady bridget was like you should come outside and talk and i said bridget i'm not afraid of these people any more than heather is i've got lawyers of the exactly. wazoo in my family if i get in trouble i'll just call one and say oh i bet you can't believe i made it to 52 without getting arrested mm -hmm. but i did finally and they'll be like damn lisa you know yeah. so that is how i feel yeah. would happen um, and, but Heather's been arrested plenty of times. I really say this now. Fuck them. Yeah. But I pray for them. I know they, you know. Yeah. It's okay. We all right. God is good all the time. All the time. God is good. You know? Yep. Yeah. Yep. And the reason why this really hasn't happened sooner is because the people who are with us on the inside know it can't be a physical confrontation. Because a physical confrontation is only going to lead us to another control system. So, yeah, everybody so, got to stay cool. Yeah, stay so smart, the reason why moves. this had to be done in love with the divine being presiding over yeah. all is because just before they ask you to start the proceeding, they say, are you going to tell the whole truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God. Yeah. And that is where they lose. Because if they want you to invoke God... No, she says, I'm going to tell the truth according to God, not your laws. She, 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 she changed what she said. She, Heather changed the, the, the promise. I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Exactly. Heather said, I, I promise to tell the truth from my original being point of view as a divine being of God. Yeah. And she put it all on herself and said, I will own what I say according to myself and none of your bullshit so when neil comes out he'll have i'm sure many people were annoyed that i got thrown out but i'm not unhappy because it lets them know that even well-dressed white people are pissed off i'm sorry you know but it's got to stop being just the minority people who show up and and say we're we're oppressed yeah the stupid no i know it's all of us but the stupid white people don't know that Exactly, but we're all slaves, and yeah. and it, this is a, a but worldwide I thing. as a person do not know how to free everybody. I don't know how to make the cops you stop know. dragging you all out of the car and beating that's your ass, and that's the scary part for me is I don't want to see that happen. That may not be your mission. It, it may not be my mission. Maybe my mission is information. I'm only finding out what my dharma is now because I've only had the space to do that. I was working in the healthcare system, you know, harming people basically. Here's Neil. Hey. All right. Hey, everyone. Um, Who would it is be to? <laughs> we're in a, a recess right now. The uh, the judge, uh, in my opinion, um, has done something very improper, and that is 
she, Boss, who's her counselor, came and said, look, you know, came back after recess and said, look, you know, she understands with the waiver thing and she's, you know, willing to waive her right to an attorney. She just probably, my guess is she would have spoken that verbally but would not have signed anything to say that. And then at that point where I think the judge screwed up and is not adhering to the law and to the Constitution is now saying, oh, well, now the court doubts whether or questions whether or not she actually understands her right to, you know, waive her right to an attorney, which she knows is total bunk. She knows she's already asked about Heather's education. She's got a JD. She was a prosecuting attorney, banking compliance officer. So, I mean, if anybody in the world understands exactly what waiving a right to an attorney is, it was Heather. So then the judge, by using that excuse of feigning, you know, protecting the defendant, forced the proceedings to continue on with Baugh as her, you know, as her counsel. And again, against her wishes. And continually her attorney told the court that she does not want me to represent her. She is okay with a standby counsel. She does not want it to be me. He said that over and over and over. And I think he made every reasonable effort to continue to protest that decision and moving on on the basis that, oh, she might not understand, you know, what it is that she's waiving. It's absolutely absurd. So right now the FBI agent, what's his name, Still, Parker Still, testified, presented video evidence, fingerprint matching, those sorts of things, photographs. And he was the only one that testified on behalf of the government to try to establish her identification. And then after that was completed, Heather's counsel, Boss, attempted to strike, I think, all of his testimony and all of the exhibits or some of them, all of them. Yeah, he tried to have all four exhibits striked and his testimony striked and the court ruled against that. And so now they're going to go into an argument phase and we're in a lunch recess and the court's going to resume at 1.30. Hey, what are you going to call it? What do you want to call it? Hold on. What do you want to call your periscope? Think of a name. No, this is going to be your account name. He knows. I don't know what you guys are saying, but... Oh, so you give me your phone? Yeah, he's going to download Periscope onto his phone and let you talk through that one like it's your phone. I don't think everybody understands the problem. Give me one second, folks. Okay, guys, and I'm sorry, I can't see the screen. We're trying to work out some technical issues because, unfortunately, I have to leave. I never imagined this would take this long, and I have to leave the scene. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. It's unfortunate, but I have to. So, Steve, we're going to get my Periscope account onto Steve's phone, and Steve's going to continue providing coverage. Steve's going to go up in the courtroom. Folks down here will give their input or whatever, I guess, while Steve's up there figuring out what the results are, the final results today after the lunch recess. So that's where we are, guys. Really disappointed in this federal judge. I'm going to once again say that the way in which the federal judge handled this case, I think, is just unbelievable. Thank you.
the judge forced the proceedings to go forward against Heather's will, against Heather's attorney's will. Her attorney made it crystal clear that Heather does not want him as standby counsel, but that she's okay with having standby counsel, just not him. And the attorney then, I mean the uh, judge, because earlier Heather had indicated that she was not going to sign. Uh oh, I got to go. I got now. I got parking ticket issues. I got. Me, hey, Steve, give me my keys. Yeah, All right. <clears throat> like uh, Neil said, there's a, a lunch recess. Uh, Bill, American Kabuki is there. Joseph, her husband, is there. She seems confident. Uh, I think the fact that the the judge did strike some evidence is uh, proof that this is working. Okay. Uh, Neil, check your text message. Neil just went to the truck. So, uh, I'll tell him to check his text messages. I think he's getting a ton. <coughs> uh, some evidence was stricken. I'm not exactly sure what it was. I think it was um, from the FBI. All right, Neil's coming back. The love is working. Sorry, guys, I had to take care of my park and park. The cops coming right up the street right now. It expired at 11:30 again. I didn't know it'd be here this long. So anyway, the judge uh, used the fact that Heather initially said she would not waive her right because, again, she was trying to avoid acknowledging any jurisdiction on this court's part so the judge in my opinion wrongfully used that to then try to pretend that heather who has been a prosecuting attorney has the jd um you know uh, was a banking compliance officer did doesn't perhaps the court is concerned that she doesn't understand uh the right to waive and then again um boss said that uh hey look you know she after the recess she would like to waive that right now, you know, and she fully understands. And the, the uh, judge just kept coming back and saying, no, the court has concerns. So she used that to force those proceedings, to force to where Baugh represented her. Uh, total miscarriage of justice going on in twofold, because Heather has a constitutional right to defend herself. And secondly, she has the constitutional right to fire her counsel, and that judge forbid that from happening. And it was clear, very clear to the entire courtroom that those were two things that she wanted. So, um, thanks. I'll be okay if I leave at one. I'm, sh I'm trying to go ahead and talk. I'm trying to... Oh, really? So he just said, uh, Parker still, the FBI agent, has an earpiece. So, uh, I don't know, maybe being told what to say or whatever. You know, it could be a hearing aid. You don't know, you know. It could be standard operating procedure. Yeah, take a deep breath. Well, somebody wrote, take a deep breath. But uh, it's a little upsetting how, how blatant it was uh, that the judge was abusing that. And especially doing it pretending to be in Heather's best interest. It's like, come on, judge. That judge is scared. That judge wants this out of her court, or that magistrate, I should say, and that, that's the whole reason behind that. And by the way, folks, that courtroom is full. Um, I would say about three quarters of the people there are supporters for Heather, and I have no idea what the rest of them are, probably undercover marshals or whatever, you know. And I actually heard one marshal down the hallway, a, another employee here at the courthouse or another marshal, whatever, was asking him, what, what, what are all those people there for? And he said, uh, he said, uh, some sovereign nation stuff. And I, right when I was passing by, I said, I said, I don't know anything about sovereign nation. I said, this, this, this case has, has mostly to do with UCC law. Oh, oh okay. So, uh, yeah, that's the mindset probably up here is, wow, we got to have a bunch of marshals because these dangerous sovereigns are coming, which is, you know, that's a narrative that the federal government has pushed. 
It has pushed it to state and local law enforcement. And the reason they have done it is because they're scared to death. They try to make people who actually know the true law out to be these dangerous villains. Go check it out yourself. They have the documentation on that that they provide to other law enforcement to paint this false picture about what are probably typically far more peaceful people than the average people. Check phone message from team. Okay, I will. Okay, um, I don't know, I guess, uh, okay, check the phone. All right, guys, I'm going to sign out and check the phone. People keep telling me to check my messages. So I'm going to sign out for now. I hate to do that with 463 people viewing. Um, but uh, anyway, we've got to sign out and get some stuff straight, and we'll be back. Thank you. Love you all.